Hi, welcome back. Or if you're just joining, my name is Maya, and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm focused on Hermes scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Next week is Christmas, which usually makes me think of Vienna, an exquisite destination for any time of the year thanks to its architecture, museums, and classical music heritage. But especially at Christmas, there's an old world charm that always recalls fond memories for me. So in this video, I'll share some tidbits about the city and take a look at some classic Hermes music-themed scarf designs. Let's get started! Not merely the capital of Austria, Vienna is known today as the capital of classical music, thanks in part to the famous composers who lived and worked there in the late 18th century. If you're a classical music fan, you'll know that it's a who's who list of composers, including the likes of Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, Schubert, Strauss, and others who all lived and worked there. But did you know that Vienna is home to the world's oldest zoo? Or that every year hundreds of balls take place in the city? Well, here are a few tidbits for your back pocket that you can whip out at your next cocktail party. You can thank me later. First, did you know that the snow globe was invented in Vienna? In 1900, a fine instruments mechanic named Edwin Perzi was trying to improve the brightness of light bulbs for a surgical lamp by adding water and semolina flakes. While it didn't work so well in the surgical theater, he accidentally invented a snow globe. The world's first snow globe featured the Basilica of Marietzel, and pardon the mispronunciation if I did, but that is a Roman Catholic church in the city of the same name in Austria. It is arguably one of the most important pilgrimage destinations in Austria and one of the most visited shrines in Europe. Based on this chance invention, Berzi and his brother then opened the original Vienna snow globe shop, which is still in business today. Vienna is also home to one of the world's oldest Ferris wheels. Constructed in 1897, this Ferris wheel is the oldest operating one in the world. It's probably most famous for its part in the 1949 movie The Third Man, and for many, it is a symbol of the city. Next, did you know that croissants are actually Viennese in origin? Yes, that's right. The iconic French pastry originated in Vienna. These buttery and soft delights were inspired by an Austrian pastry called Pipferl, meaning crescent in German. According to popular lore, they were made by Viennese bakers to commemorate the Austrian victory over the Ottoman Turks in 1683. The shape of the pastry was based on the crescent moon of the Ottoman flag. This crescent pastry was then introduced to France by Marie Antoinette of Austria when she married King Louis XVI. And the French obviously evolved it as their own. One of Vienna's nicknames is also the City of Dreams. Sigmund Freud, father of psychoanalysis, lived and worked in Vienna for many years. And during that time, he had a significant impact on the city, making it known as the birthplace of psychotherapy. The Vienna Zoo is the world's oldest and only Baroque zoo built in the gardens of Schönbrunn Palace in 1752. It began as a royal menagerie, symbolic of the imperial Austrian extravagance and of Emperor Franz I's keen interest in the natural world. It first opened to the public in 1779 and now boasts over 700 different species of animals. It is regularly voted one of the world's best zoos and has hosted more than 2 million visitors every year since 2006. Zuckertorte is a famous chocolate and apricot cake. It was invented in 1832 by 16-year-old pastry chef Franz Zucker for the prince at the time. Interestingly, Franz Zucker was also an apprentice at the time who had filled in for the prince's chef, who was ill. These days, the Hotel Sacre in Vienna is the only place that produces the 100% authentic Zakertorte. Fun fact, the hotel reportedly produces over 270,000 pieces a year. 
Viennese ball season runs from January to March. Some of the most famous balls include the Opern Ball, which is held at the Vienna State Opera since 1877, the Philharmonic Ball, which features a performance by the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, and the Blumen Ball, famous for its flower arrangements. So in keeping with our musical theme, let's take a look at some vintage Hermes scarf designs. First issued in 1963 and reissued circa mid-1990s and the early 2000s, this design features a smaller-sized orchestra with musicians playing strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion, and is drawn in the artist's signature style. Other scarves you may know from him include La Soirée à l'Opéra, Haddock, and Swinging Saint-Germain. Born in Switzerland in 1908, Jean-Louis Clair was quite an accomplished artist. In addition to being a painter, Clair was a cartoonist, illustrator, journalist, and a writer. He reportedly studied at the prestigious École des Beaux-Arts in Geneva and finished his studies at the University of Arts, Crafts, and Design in Stockholm. Interestingly, this design was first issued after the artist's death in 1961. Because of the number of reissues, one would think that you could find this at a relatively reasonable price. And while that still may be possible, the ones that I've seen on the market, at least lately, seem to be all at quite premium. This next one was inspired by Greek mythology. Designed by Claudia Stuhlhofer Meyer and first issued in 1996, it depicts the music of the gods, music and dance of mythical ancient Greece. The Greek god Apollo, son of Zeus and Leto, is one of the most well-known gods of music. He was often associated with the sun and considered to be a god of healing, light, truth, poetry, and music. He was also the god of prophecy and archery. With respect to music, Apollo is often associated with the lyre, and he is said to have given musical instruction to his son, Orpheus, who, like his father, was a legendary musician and poet. Additionally, there were the Muses, nine Greek goddesses of music, song, and dance, who were originally nymphs and goddesses of the wilderness. I won't list all their names here, but it is said that their numbers through to 12 when they attended Mount Olympus. Surprisingly, this is a design that can still be had at fairly reasonable prices in the secondary market. Although, like many things, it's really all about supply and demand, and pricing is what the market will bear. This next design also issued in 1996, pays homage to one of history's greatest composers, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, and the city in which he was born. On the left-hand side is a rendition of where the composer was born in 1756, and at the bottom, a view of the city skyline with its famous fortress in front of the mountains. Mozart is widely recognized as one of the greatest composers in the history of Western music. With Haydn and Beethoven, he brought to its height the achievement of the Viennese classical school. Unlike any other composer in musical history, he wrote in all the musical genres of his day and excelled in each one. But while he was a son of Salzburg, Mozart ultimately ended up in Vienna and worked there as an independent musician, supporting himself through commissions and by giving piano lessons, eventually marrying his wife Constanza Weber at the Gothic St. Stephen's Cathedral in 1782. This is a scarf that, when it pops up, has historically been at fairly reasonable prices, but it seems increasingly rare that it does surface, which could naturally drive up prices. Issued the same year as the last design, Homage à Mozart, is another tribute to this musical prodigy, this one by Julia Abadi. At the age of three, young Mozart was already picking out chords on the harpsichord, proficient in the violin and keyboard, and writing complex pieces by the age of five. There are anecdotes about his precise memory of pitch and composing a major mass and his first opera at the age of twelve. 
By the age of 17, he was performing for royalty at the Salzburg court, but grew restless with the appointment and eventually made his way, as mentioned, to Vienna, where he would stay until his death. In his lifetime, Mozart wrote over 600 works, many of which are still regarded as prime examples of their genres. You may have already started to see a pattern here. Hermes's theme in 1996 was music. Now, the prices for this design in the secondary market seem to be all over the place, but it does seem possible to find it at a decent price if it's on your wish list. This next design is yet another music-themed scarf, first issued in 1996 and reissued circa 2000 and 2006. It features a violin at its center, surrounded by lyrical clefts and notes and bits of scores as decoration. The name of the scarf itself is perhaps a nod to the Musica Universalis, literally universal music, also called music of the spheres or harmony of the spheres. This is an ancient philosophical concept from Pythagoras, yes, of the Euclidean geometric theorem that, among other things, is quite useful in calculating the diagonal dimension of a scarf. At any rate, he coined this term, musica universalis, to describe his assertion that the movements of all celestial bodies in the sky, that is, the sun, the moon, and planets, were guided by strict mathematical equations and resonated to produce a harmony of music, physically imperceptible to the human ear. And further, that the harmonious sounds that humans make were an approximation of this larger harmony of the universe. I'll leave you with that thought as you consider the music you enjoy, and classical music in particular. So this design is another one with prices that vary tremendously, but it can be had in the secondary market at fairly reasonable prices if you're willing to be patient. So there you have it. Some background about the lovely city that is Vienna, and a few music-themed vintage Hermes scarf designs. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, not tutorials, and more. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time!